your um, games. So you can take your game in Windows Phone and you can take your game in the Windows Store. Okay. And you can link them together into a single purchase. And so that's very attractive to people um, who leverage both platforms. Yeah. Right. So we all, you know, Windows Phone, you've got a Windows tablet or PC at home. And I've got an example here of Halo Spartan Assault, it's something, a first party game right. that Microsoft put out. Um, if I purchase it on Windows Store for $4.99, I also get to download that on Windows Phone. Right, without any additional cost. Without any additional payments or cost. Yep. Uh, so it's a great experience for the consumer to be able to do that. Um, you can certainly factor that into your pricing, I yeah. think, right? I mean, you can charge a dollar extra to, to make it available on both platforms as opposed to making, so you can do like $1.99 on each platform. Right. You can merge them and charge two ninety nine. dollars Exactly. Right, and true. then you get better coverage, uh, better install coverage across Absolutely. devices. Especially with uh, universal apps and Unity, it kind of makes it easier than ever because largely you can build, have, you know, uh, one build process spits out files for both platforms and you're good to go. Yeah, and that's the universal apps, which we'll cover here in a few minutes. So let's talk about this, the method of exporting from Unity to Windows. Okay. Okay. Um, here's this, this big chart of prerequisites. Uh, we'll try to demystify this the best we can. Okay. It seems complicated at first, but I'm confident we'll break yeah. it down. Yeah, we'll break it down. Uh, so Windows Store. Yeah, we, we covered that. We also have a Windows Phone 8 platform and store. So we recommend, highly recommend Unity 4.5 higher for these. Yes. Uh, you know, tons of great bug fixes, performance improvements, um, you know, new features uh, included in those versions. Mm -hmm. uh, to build, so to run the SDK, yes. you've got to have Windows 8 or greater okay. for both, so Windows someone, Store and Windows Phone 8. If somebody doesn't have Windows 8, uh, what is a great way to, get, to actually get their hands on it? Let's see, what do we have? We've got BizSpark. Yes. We've got DreamSpark. For if you're a student, DreamSpark right. is essentially our school equivalent. We have the, uh, the new Unity developer offer. Yes, for both level one and level yep. two developers. Yep, and we can go over that later. Please. Yeah. Um, so you do need that. You also need Visual Studio 2012 or greater. Which again um, is included yeah. in each of those offers as well. So yep. we'll, we'll often handle the, uh, the operating system cost for you, and in most cases handle Visual Studio licensing for you. And was, as with anything, we, we always recommend the latest version of anything. Absolutely. So you can get your hands on it, right? Um, you know, it does require the SDKs for each platform, yep. which are uh, included in the installation with Visual Studio. So not a lot of extra work there. Yeah. Now, uh, Universal Apps is a new concept that was introduced this, late, earlier this year, okay. in the spring. Now, Unity 4.5.3 is the version that supports exporting uh, to Universal Apps, and that's, that's live now. You can go download that on the Unity website. Um, that does require Windows 8.1 mm -hmm. and Visual Studio 2013 Update 2 or greater. I yes. think we're on eight, Update 3 now. Um, and then the SDKs, again, get installed with Visual Studio. Right. So, um, and we'll cover what universal apps are in just a few minutes. I don't want to delve into that just yet. But you also need a developer account to be able to uh, deploy these, okay. and test them on devices, along with also publishing to the stores. And again, those Fees can often be waived uh, through DreamSpark or BizSpark memberships. And I uh, have to point out, it's quite a bit cheaper than what uh, many competing platforms uh, charge in terms of developer accounts as well. Yep. Uh, and, you know, if you look at down at the bottom right-hand side of this chart, we've got register for $19 for an individual, $99 for a company. That does cover both stores. Yeah. Uh, again, BizSpark... Uh, I think some versions of DreamSpark Premium yes. offer, the Unity offer. We have several ways of, again, getting that to you for free. Right, waiving these fees. Um, and that's sure. just engaging an evangelist or, or applying to one of these offers that we have online. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I thought we, we were doing right by developers a couple of years ago when we had Xbox Live Indie Games, and it was $100 per year per platform. Now we're dropping it down to 20 It's just getting better and better over time for developers. Yep. So let's do a demo. We're going to export the great game that Adam and Matt made. Okay. Um, Zombie Pumpkin Slayer. Or whatever I like it. All right. Yeah. We're going to export that to a Windows Phone 8 Visual Studio project so we can see what, what that looks like. And we just happen to have a phone here to test it as well? We do. Yeah. So what is your weapon of choice? Which phone are you using at the moment? <laughs> I have a uh, Nokia 1520. 
Good choice indeed. That's my personal phone. It's great. I love it. I'm using the same thing as well. I don't think I could go back to a smaller screen now, now that I'm on that. Right? People ask, how do you use such a large phone? And my response always is, well, I don't typically use my phone for <laughs> conversations, right? It's email or OneNote and, and ways of staying organized. So when 90% of my time goes towards staring at a screen, I need to be as large as, as possible. So I'm just get this project open here on the desktop. Okay, so we're opening up uh, mm -hmm. Unity at this point. Okay, anxious to see how this turns out because I know I have been working on it. You know, I saw with, uh, them drawing new art earlier today. Yep, yep. Not gonna lie, I get kind of jealous when I see someone with such uh, such talent when it comes to drawing art. Uh, we're both programmers here, so our yeah. art skills tend to be I'm lacking terrible. at times. I'm yeah. terrible. I, I bought a Surface Pro 3 so I could do some drawing. Yeah. And it's, it's not gone well. I'm sure it's better than anything I could come up with at this I'm point. I'm pretty sure my, my three and a half year old son can draw better than I can. Hey, there's no shame. There's no shame. Yeah. <laughs> We've all got to start somewhere, so this is a perfect opportunity. I go to school and see what he's been working on, and he's just putting me in shame. <laughs> Granted, he has tools available to him today that we didn't have as, as children, so. Okay. Okay, so, so walk us through this project. We have uh, Zombie Punk and Slayers built by Adam and Matt. Okay. Um, I'm going to open build settings real quick here. And uh, I don't see that I have any scenes actually in the builds. That's very important when you're exporting a Unity project. Right. Um, so kind of an easy way to do that is I'm going to open the scene folder, and I don't see scenes at all. Hmm, perhaps they removed them on you. Or they just nope. kept it in the base assets. Folder. Maybe I have a bad export of a project here. Bear with me. I will find out in just a moment. So like Adam mentioned earlier, uh, when you're, or I'd asked during the first session, as we're starting to uh, build our scenes, we may have 13 scenes in our entire folder, but we're not necessarily using all of them at once. Um, Adam, for example, brought up that he has 13 Why scenes, but he's only actually using three at any given point for his project. The rest are often just used for testing here and there, um, going for best practices, maybe seeing different kinds of performance. Well, you example. know what? We'll just we'll use a different project. Perfect. We'll move on from that. We'll use, uh, hopefully, this is what Carl was using earlier. Okay. Looks like it. All right, his little auto runner that he had going on yeah. before. Okay. Let's look up. Uh, kind of looked like some, some Don Bluth okay, art. We've got there a we scene. go. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Again, the, the art kind of putting us to shame. So build settings, we got we have scenes Beautiful. in our build. That's great. We have a start screen and the first level. All right, so the first demo I'm going to do is actually exporting to Windows Phone 8. And uh, the reason you would want to target this separately, and we'll, we'll get into Windows Store later. OK. Uh, we are updating our install base to Windows Phone 8.1. Yes. But it is taking a little bit of time, and, mm -hmm. and it probably won't be completed until later this year. Things don't happen overnight. So if you're doing a, a Windows game or Windows Phone game and you plan on publishing it maybe in the next couple of months, I would go ahead and separately target Windows Phone 8 yep. as opposed to a universal app. OK. Uh, and that way, you maximize the, in, the available install base of Absolutely. Windows Phone. Right? You don't want to. Um, you kind of your limit your potential size, at that right. point, yeah. So I'm going to switch platforms to Windows Phone 8. Give us a moment to build. It's going to compile yeah. our entire project, put the scripts together, okay. the images. And you'll notice here we have a development build checkbox that we can check. And that's there in case I want to be able to connect the profiler. Okay. And I can profile on a Windows Phone device. Okay. You kind of test right. performance, do some debugging, and whatever else. Yep. So I'm going to skip that. I'm just gonna. Um, I'm gonna create a new folder. Uh, always wise to stay organized and have yep. uh, a build Fault folder builds. for separate platforms. And then I'm gonna create one for uh, WP8. Okay. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Build surprisingly very quickly. I like it. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go in just a moment. Post-processing player, so it's putting together our entire scene, and the player is actually what is wrapped within the Windows Phone or Windows 8 application. So the player is all of Unity that's handling our inputs, um, the draw loop, the update loop, things of that nature. Right. And we're done. You see we have this WP8 folder, and inside this folder we actually have our Visual Studio solution uh, from our game that we just exported from Unity. Okay. So I'm going to open this up just to, to get a quick look at it, to kind of see what What's what kind of going on like? under the hood over there? Yeah, exactly. And uh, what Unity exports, uh, it is a full buildable Visual Studio solution. It's got all the right build targets and everything for Windows Phone. Okay. Um, 
it, for Windows Phone, it, what it does not export mm -hmm. are the uh, the uh, icons and stuff for the tiles. Right. That's something you actually have to set up in Visual Studio. Okay, not a problem. Right. Um, and you would do that in? It looks like a very or, basic uh, Windows Phone file. application at this point. Yep. And so it exports a XAML C-sharp based Windows Phone project. Okay. Uh, if For those of you familiar with the platform changes, this would be called a... Uh, a phone Silverlight project. Yes. Windows Phone Silverlight project. So that file you just opened model. up right there. What was that? That was at manifest? This is, uh, this is I've got mainpage.xaml open here. Okay. Just to kind of show you what's going on. We do have a, a XAML page that wraps the Unity player. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then it has this drawing surface background grid, which is actually the surface that the Unity game is going to be uh, rendered on. Okay. So that's our render target, essentially. Okay. And then uh, you can come into the app manifest. This is where you would declare your, or set up your app icons, uh, declare the resolutions that you plan on supporting. Right, perhaps the orientation, right. or if you only want it to play landscape or vertical, this is where you'd set those, those settings. Yep, and also if you're, when you're getting ready to upload to the store and publish, you'd actually come in here and set up these, uh, these values here for packaging uh, once you get them from the developer portal. So I'm going to put that aside for a second. I'm going to go back to Unity. Okay. And let's look at build settings for Windows Store. This is the next one. Looks slightly different. Have, you have a few more yeah. options at this point. Um, I'm going to. I'm just going to advance my slide. Okay. And I'm going to go back to Unity. Go back to build settings. Windows Store. This is a little bit more complex. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, we'll go through this real quick. So we have a type selected here of, of XAML C Sharp solution. Uh, if you feel more comfortable in C++ and native, yes. then you know you can certainly export a C++ solution. Uh, I prefer C Sharp. I've As done do way too much C++ development in my lifetime. And I'm also using uh, Prime 31 Azure plugin, and I know that requires C Sharp right. and XAML mm -hmm. as well. So often, you have to look at some of the plugin requirements because they may have specific uh, features like that. Yep, and you can also do very easy uh, interop code between Unity and C Sharp yes. on the platform uh, using pound if def yep. precompiler commands. So it's pretty handy for that. Um, I can select the SDK version that I want to build against. You'll notice we've got four of them now. We have a Windows 8 SDK. We've got a Windows 8.1 SDK. Okay. We've got a phone 8.1 SDK. Mm -hmm. And then, the, then we have the universal app SDK. So is there one you suggest developers target at this point? I will say that um, th it's probably safe to target 8.1 for yes. Windows Store apps. Um, you certainly won't hurt anything to target 8.0. Okay. Uh, you know, just in case there is still uh, in an in install base that hasn't updated to 8.1 yet. Okay. Right. So for that sake, I think we'll just stick on 8.0. Perfect. Just to prove it works, right? Um, again, we have the development build. Right. Option. And like I mentioned, we can the profiler is right profiler. There. Uh, Another cool feature here is that I can include the script solution or the script projects for my C Sharp scripts okay. into my Visual Studio solution for this project type. This can kind of edit the C Sharp scripts within Visual Studio as soon as you open up this solution. Exactly. Built. Yep. So um, again, the same thing I did on Windows Phone. I'm going to go and I'm going to create a, a build directory for this. Okay. And I'm going to call this one just Windows Store Apps or WSA. Okay. This is just my way of organizing. Yeah, so the, the naming scheme actually doesn't matter here. It's just a, yeah, a way... It's whatever makes sense to you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, these are demo naming schemes for me. Um, so again, I'm just going to... I'm going to build it out into a Visual Studio solution. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice why that's going on. There's also a build and run button. And that does enable you to go ahead and build and then debug without touching Visual Studio. Perfect. Which is pretty cool if you're not real comfortable with Visual Studio. Yeah. Um, Simplicity is there. key. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's available on phone as well. So you can debug to a phone device uh, right from Unity. I like it. Again, building the post-processing player, which is uh, actually um, mm -hmm. the target that our XAML app will That's now That's the, the executable, if you will. That, exactly. That runs the game piece. Yep. Yep. It kind of builds it, secures it, locks it within the application itself. Here we go. So we have a Windows Store app. Solution. I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. And you'll notice that I need to get a developer license. 
we didn't do that before. So it's going to go ping the yeah. mothership, so come back. This is something that um, the first time you load up Visual Studio for Windows Store apps, Windows 8 development, that you'll have to do. Yeah. You've got to get a developer license. Um, and it's a one-time sign-in. I agree. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this here. Yeah. So it's basically just 